new on Curiosity Stream. With my infrared drone, I can see what others can't. Drone pilot Doug Thrawn uses his bird's eye view for the ultimate good, saving animals from desperate situations around the globe. Join the rescue effort on a new season of Doug to the Rescue. And you captured a Confederate steamboat? We're taking the ship to freedom. An enslaved crew, a stolen vessel, and a Civil War dash to salvation on impossible escapes. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. What's up? It's your boy, the Ben Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land. The podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. Party of the minute, it's drinking time. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And the men's room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Drink time it is, and as usual, we head to see Drink Dad Scan, see him throw a hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed. By the way, everyone, leave Mike Hawk alone. When he gets <laughs> home tonight, he's going to see his fiance and try to get knee deep in her five vagina. There we go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> today, we toast, <laughs> today, we toast Micker, Mr. Ricky Roach. Of Cheatham County, Tennessee. I should preface this story by pointing out that Ricky Roach, yes, that's a stupid name. He also happens to be an idiot, but he's an inmate. All right. And last month he escaped from a hospital and tried to get away on a child's bike. Now he found a girl's bike and he took off on it. Here's the thing. The bike apparently was not being used at the time because it had one pedal. The other pedal was missing. Police put out an alert over the radio. Off-duty cop, a guy named Steve Ellis, he heard it. Then he looked out of his own kitchen window and saw Ricky pushing the one-pedaled bike up a steep hill. So Steve ran out, said he was a cop, told him to stop. What did Ricky do? He looked exhausted, didn't even argue. Just laid down on the ground, waited to be arrested. Keep in mind, he was on the run for two hours. He only made it two miles. The average person walks three miles an hour. But he got on a one-pedaled bicycle and made it two miles so he managed to go one mile an hour less than he would have gone if he was just walking now he's back in jail police are trying to figure out who the bike belongs to oddly enough people have already offered to fix it up the cops said if you want to be nice just buy the get a new bike it was a pos yeah. anyway yeah. uh a one pedal bicycle that's your getaway vehicle and you go two miles and god damn i get out of my face with that nonsense <laughs> right. it's like just you said, like, just walk i just walk so we pour this booze and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. Yummy! So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down the hole, la bitchola! The men's room presents Profile This. Hey, Stephen Throw Hill, can you please tell everyone how Profile This is played? A short can, Miles. It's a simple game where we share with you a real life news story, something that happened right here on planet Earth. Earth, 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 Earth. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. Hello, Austin. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 All right, Austin, you understand how this here game is played? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> re explain, re explain, re explain. Fantastic. We have the wonderful world of drugs. That's one category. Category two is bite me. In other words, what did someone find in their food? And finally, category three, interior decorating. Where you oh, guess the... Oh, my butt. All right. <laughs> Just drop that line immediately, Austin, when you walk into a bar. See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> you might get lucky. Who knows? Austin was here for hey, 15 seconds. I worked three chicks. It was amazing. Yeah. The guy's a Casanova. All right, Austin, here is your story. A drug dealer who had smuggled something between two U.K. prisons up his backside as his cell was raided has now been jailed. A guy named Harry Pullen, swear to God, that's his name. <laughs> Harry Pullen, he'd been jailed in October of 2019 for drug trafficking offenses. He was found in possession of this other bit of contraband when his cell was searched in January of this year. 
Well, he was taken for an x-ray, which showed a, quote, non-organic object secreted within his rectum. Anyway, he admitted that he brought the object with him from one uh, prison cell to the other, and he, but he tried to blame prison authorities for not finding it when they searched his belongings. After attempts to convince prison staff not to report him, after that failed, well, he refused to retrieve the object, and it was placed in a cell of his own. Well, the next day, they found pieces of the object all over the floor. Well, judges released him, believe it or not, on conditional bail. Well, he was arrested again in April after being caught driving without a license and 17 wraps of cocaine and heroin. So he was sentenced to four years and nine months in prison. He'll also be banned from driving for 12 months after his release. But the question is, what did he have hidden in his keister when they moved him from one cell to the other? Was it a crack pipe, a cell phone, a switchblade, or a gun? So crack pipe, cell phone, switchblade, or gun, one of those four was up the backside. All right, can I ask the peanut gallery, Mr. Ted, what, what, what he thinks? I mean, you could if you respect me. Stop saying peanut gallery. Uh, where did you, you say this was over in England? It's in the UK. I don't know what part of the UK, but the UK, yeah. I mean, just because oh, it's the UK, right? Like, guns are super hard to get over there. Yeah. So I'm thinking either a switchblade. So, I mean, look, if I'm in prison, I really want a cell phone. You know what? I'm going to go cell phone. Dad, I'm going to join oh. you. That's what. I, that's 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 the one thing. You can have a gun. Do you have ammo? What about your reason? Yeah, yeah. It's two bullets. I'm Look, if I'm, with- if I'm smuggling a gun, I'll I'll smuggle a, some ammo too. <laughs> <laughs> He's got big butt. Uh, yeah. Well, 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 I think he was pulling. He was pulling. Mr. Pullins was pulling a crack pipe out his butt. You on crack pipe? Right. Oh, crack pipe. I mean, Hopefully, when it, it came out in pieces, it was not. Wasn't glass. <laughs> that's, that's what we're hoping. You want to do a Austin a crack pipe final answer? Yes. Okay. We're going to find out if it was a crack pipe, a cell phone, a switchblade, or a gun next. Oh, that's me. That was a tease. New on Curiosity Stream. From time to time, we have collisions between asteroids and the Earth. We track them. We study them. We hope the big one never comes. Don't look up. It's Asteroid Rush. And alligators. They rarely get sick. They even outlasted the dinosaurs. Could they hold the secret to human longevity? Their blood could have antibacterial applications. Wade into the investigation on immortal alligators. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. 99.9 KISW. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Our category is interior decorating on profile. This we got a drug dealer. He is obviously jailed. After drug trafficking from one cell to another. Yes. I guess he didn't want uh, them going in his backside to find anything in there. But in the morning, there was things that he pulled out of there. Well, sorry, poof. Fragments. Either somewhere. way, right, right. So was it a crack pipe, cell phone, a uh, switchblade, or gun? And Austin, that is a question that we posed to you. You went with the good old-fashioned crack pipe. After all, we're talking about is crack. However, ooh, no. not no. a crack pipe. You will not be sharing crack with him tonight. Uh, v. Ted Smith, Miles Montgomery, you both went cell phone. Yeah, correct. All right. All right. There you go. Go. He butt dials a lot. Can of you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Hello. It's me on the butt phone. Now for all TV news all the time. Time for TV time with Ted. And now, because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box, again. the men's room presents TV time with Ted. Ah. All right. The choice today, Seth Myers. Okay. The gym is Kimmelfeld. Writers. Oh. Or Ted Smith. Is it Ted or is it late night? It is right there. The title all these guys have teams with talented writers and help them come up with their monologues each and every night. It is up to you to determine is this an actual late night joke and from whom? Or could it be a the Ted Smith original? During a parade over the weekend honoring her Platinum Jubilee, a hologram of Queen Elizabeth was shown in her gold stagecoach. Whatever you think of the Queen, her duet, her duet with Tupac was amazing. <laughs> Foul. <laughs> Smith. Myers. During a parade over the weekend honoring her Platinum Jubilee, a hologram of Queen Elizabeth was shown in her gold stagecoach. And whatever you think of the Queen, her duet with Tupac was amazing. 
this weekend was Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee. Britain marked the 70-year reign uh, with four days of parades, parties, and celebrations. Basically, the Queen is like your annoying friend who insists on celebrating their birthday month. Needs that sort. Foul. This weekend was Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee. That's right. Britain marked the Queen's 70-year reign with four days of parades, parties, and celebrations. Basically, the Queen's like your annoying friend who insists on celebrating their birthday month. (laughs) Over the weekend in England, they celebrated the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. But but watching the parade was tough, said she can move in any direction. (laughs) Dead. Found. Smurf! Just joke. Just joke. Just joke. <laughs> <laughs> Apple just announced a new feature that will allow people to edit and unsend messages. When people heard this, they were like, finally, what the duck took you so long? Fallon. Smith. Fallon. That's Fallon. Apple just announced a new feature that will allow people to edit and unsend messages. Ooh. When they heard Apple users were like, finally, what the duck took you so long, man? Yeah. A man recently threw cake on protective glass of Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. He also threw some on a Picasso, but no one noticed. <laughs> uh, That's Seth Myers. Myers. That's Seth Myers. A man recently threw cake on the protective glass of Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa painting at the Louvre in Paris, he also threw some on a Picasso, but no one noticed. Yeah, I had the te- chest joke. I'm not sure I get the Picasso joke. Uh, he's a impressionist, so most of the stuff just looks kind of like Starry Night. Oh, so yeah, with very, the screen. Yeah, you could just... That's not Picasso. Yeah. That's not Picasso. Oh, that's Picasso. Picasso. Oh, Picasso. Oh, Picasso. Picasso. It looks like your child did it. Oh, oh, I was thinking right. about it. Uh, uh, if you saw it, Van you'd Gogh. recognize yeah, it, Van Gogh. and you would think to yourself, like, that's not... I'm sure that's there's why, some... That's like, the redeem- are over here. Right. Oh, right. Oh, 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 Basically... That's right. That's right. Like I said, my kids do the same thing. They're just not famous. I believe that's abstract, is it not? We're basically they had to nothing, come up with some term. Nothing's where it's supposed to be, right. you see. So it's crazy. Just yeah, we crazy. call it garbage, but yeah. then they give it a name and you make millions. Ooh, I look. still think it's amazing. His first name's Pablo. Penis nose. Why is that amazing? Because I just as a kid, like Escobar. No, just like, like you grow up hearing about Picasso. Then to find oh, right, out right. that he actually he has had, a name, right? That he wasn't, and it's not like he's from like the. Victorian ages or something. He died in like what the sixties, something like that. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, and his name's Pablo. And it's like, little Pablo Picasso. <laughs> that was <laughs> little Pablo. Well, I don't know why, I didn't, but I'm just saying it just makes him more like as opposed to like, oh, this Buffy, we're gonna pay three hundred million for this Picasso, and it's like paying that for a Pablo from Pablo's work. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> right? You know what I mean? It's like whenever you see like uh, I, I don't know, like. Actors are one thing because you know they're acting. Right. But like sometimes you'll see a politician or somebody. Let's say it's even a politician you don't like. But you just see them like sitting there in their backyard with like a dog and a cigar. And you're like, oh, it's just a dude. Right. In the end. Right. It humanizes them. Right. It humanizes them. So that's how it was for me when I found out his name was Pablo. (laughs) Actually, I found out from you right here on this show. Are you serious? Here we go. Yeah. Years ago. And I was like. No, really. Like I, <laughs> right. I mean, I was in my late twenties, so I found out he wasn't from like the seventeen hundreds. <laughs> I don't know a lot about art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know expensive art when I see it. Do you? I one, don't. Look, one time I walked into somebody's home and they had a lot of art, and I said, and I same thing. I'm drinking like you know, like red wine or champagne or something, and I said, I don't know a lot about art. I can tell you though, my favorite is that one. He goes, "Yeah, good eye. That's the most expensive one I have." Oh, good. No, that's it. Hey, you should have been like, oh, "I know." Uh, let's see. Uh, so I know Thrill and Mike and I. We we love the boys. Yeah. You guys started watching that. Mm-hmm. Uh, just came season three. Just came back out last. Uh, I want to say last Friday. You guys got me into it. I'm not going to say too much. I will say Don't. this. Though. Holy yes, <laughs> that show is unbelievable, man. So if you've watched The Boys, Miles, it's got look. This is yep. your All American, all right. <laughs> okay, we we all need right. you on this one. Plus, you'll thrill. You'll like All American. You'll love The Boys. Yeah, right. you'll like The Boys. That's and it seems like it's right up your alley a little bit. I, I agree. Yeah, I, I just got to finish two shows. Okay. I'm almost there. <laughs> I I'm right at the cusp. Yeah. Maybe just give up on her. No, 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 no. I gotta you do know, it. sometimes I gotta Coach Ted also has that advice. <laughs> you know what, son? 
Maybe you weren't. If it was two, maybe you aren't for baseball. But here's the thing: if I'm two or three episodes and I'm not into it, yes. Once I'm eight or nine and I've just got one or two left, I gotta stick with it. Uh, I give up on some TV shows though, depending on how long it's been going. Sure, I I I, 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 end, dude. I haven't watched The Simpsons in uh, a decade. Not a new one. Right, well, I will watch, watch a replay, but not a Even, like, with binge and stuff. Sometimes, like, I was watching this show at Amsterdam about, like, undercover cops trying to get to drug dealers. Sure. But by, like, season three, it had lost me. Yeah, you kind of go, I'm uh, giving you my best, right? Yeah, so, right. So, technically, I'm still watching that, but, like, I ain't going back to watch mm-hmm. that. Now, you'd like the boys, trust me. Yeah, but the boys comes out firing in season three. Uh, again, <laughs> do not watch this show with children. Anybody's children. Especially not yours. I wouldn't watch it. As I said in the office, I, I'm 41. I wouldn't watch this show with my own mother. Yeah. But I love it. It is disgusting. I don't know how they come up with some of the stuff. It is ridiculous. And it's superheroes. But they're not. They're not good. They're not good superheroes. It, it, like, okay. I mean, they're kinda, Does that mean they're poor at their job or they're like morally not good? No. It, more on the moral tip. Put oh, it this okay. way. If you were a superhero but to be a superhero. So you could be Batman, Superman, Spider-Man. All the people we're familiar with. But you kind of have to be officially licensed, and there's one company, and we know how it goes, right? If one company runs everything, then it turns to crap. So you're a superhero, but say, like, Jeff Bezos goes, okay, well, legally, to be recognized as a superhero. Now, keep in mind, you will get paid a lot. Mm-hmm. You'll get all the fame and fortune as an athlete, any kind of celebrity, because you, you really are, but you work for my company. Therefore, Miles, if you are Superman, and I don't know, you end up beating up a mugger. When you get back, I would be like, hey, man, you got to stay on brand. You're Superman. Mm-hmm. All right. You tell Batman to go beat up the muggers. That's what he does. You need to save the day. You don't. And I mean, but, you know, we'll, we'll cut your pay the whole nine. It's OK. It's it's crazy. But that's the way they said it. it's like corporate America. If we actually had superheroes, but to be legally difference between being a vigilante and a cop. Right. To be a right, cop, okay, like, you got to be a cop. So, and that's basically what the superheroes are. Like, you can't just have superpowers and go do some stuff. And when you watch Batman, like he just he trashes Gotham all the time. Yes, but he never has to pay for it. Like, there's a whole department that is like, look, guys, we got to pay for the collateral damages. Sometimes, also, superheroes like they kill innocents. Right. Okay. So they have a whole Fair PR enough. firm, you know. But you get called in, like, bro. I, yes, you saved the day, but the families of the seven people that died as collateral damage. You know, when you threw that train, well, it, it hit an elementary school, man. Like, you, we're going to do the press conference. This is what you're going to say. So, you know, and they fight so back. It's dark. It's constantly. Yes. It's and you'll, constantly. you'll find yourself laughing out loud and being like this. I mean, we were kind of talking about this office, but you're just like, in my head last time, I'm like, I cannot believe I'm laughing at this. <laughs> this is so bad. But it's you know so what? That's dark. my favorite kind of, that, that really is my favorite. That's what I'm saying. That's all the show. Where it's like, I should not be laughing at this. Sometimes that's my favorite stuff. Right. And don't, like, the superheroes obviously are majorly involved. But, like, the reason I started watching is Mike and Thrower, like, it's not really a superhero show per se. So, yeah, it's just dark comedy. It's strange. Again, I don't know who the writers are on that show, but (sighs) they come up with some stuff. I mean, yeah. It'd be like being on a six day meth bender and then being like, let's write a show. Let's write a show. Mm -hmm. And they'll make it for us. Yeah. And people will love it. God, it's a good show. Uh, also, like, so there's a lot of sports. Well, there's always a lot of sports going on, according to me. But right now, you have the college uh, regionals for college baseball. Now, I bring this up because Maryland got screwed on a call last night that I thought was bunk. Maryland still lost the game, though. I mean, hell, they gave up six runs with two outs in the first inning. Like, well, that that call though was 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 important in the game, the fabric it, of the game. It was. I guess I'm just like. I was really pissed off about it last night. I was fired up this morning. But then, at the end of the day, I am one of those old school sports people that also goes, mm. well, I also gave up 12 runs. It also, right. that yeah. I mean, part it was, is on Don't you. get me wrong. The call, the call to me is wrong. It was a massive point in the game. It would have been a one-run game in the bottom of the eighth inning. But also, it's like, how did we give up six runs when we had two outs of the first inning? I thought it was like my brother. It's a crap says, call, you know, man. He's an NFL official. And he goes like, look... As a team, as athlete, it, it should your success should never come down to a call I made. Right. It's like, but enough. I will say this: as far as as far as officiating goes in sport, I really truly believe the NFL does it better than anyone else. They do. Now that, I agree. Now that in college they don't do a good job from a collegiate standpoint on football and basketball, I think they do a pretty good job there. But that's rather than collegiate with the people coming up. Correct. But but, but the NBA. 
we've always known there's some crap going on there. There always has been. As far as... Well, there was a Donaghy had to do jail time for it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little more personal. In HL, I feel like they got a better handle on guys, guys, guys. They're they're not really... Sure. They seem a little bit more neutral. But as far as Major League Baseball umpires, they are the most egotistical... They've been there the longest. Like, you can only skate so long and keep up with these guys. You can only run up and down right, the NBA right. court so long. you got a dude there who's, like, worked in the league for, like, 35 years who just waddles up to the back of the plate, <laughs> gets a steak dinner in every town he goes into, and he's just that guy. And he's, you know, he's the boss, and he's a cigar smoker, and he's just going to call bull crap, and he's going to do that. It's like, they, that guy ran up from behind the plate. He saw it. That's not his call to make. There's two other umpires there. But, yeah, it, but he's ultimately, the plate. he's the crew chief. He ultimately, ultimately, he does, and he did. He overrode two different umpires. Yeah, it's like, dude, like, come on, man, yeah. stick it back in your pants. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, over the weekend, there was a Scrubs panel about the show. Uh, it was at a basically it was at a festival. So uh, Zach Braff and Donald Faison, they were both there. They were asked if they do a reunion, and they said, "Yeah, of course." Those guys were like, their character is supposed to be super tight friends. They're actually friends yeah, in real still, life. They're, they're commercials yeah. together now. Right. And they were like, yeah, we'd do it. Uh, but Zach Braff said only if the show's creator, uh, Bill Lawrence, was on board. Well, Bill was on the panel and he said, quote, if we're going to do it because we're lucky. We are going to do it because we're lucky enough to have people that care. Obviously, there's no dates to it yet, but that's pretty. I just like that. Like, I like will, the will you guys do it? Will you guys, sure. will you guys bring the men's room back? <sighs> Well, you'd have to talk to the Ted Smith. The guy sitting next to you right there. <laughs> right, like, we the absolutely thing, yeah. just threw it on you. Like, well, you know what, man? Uh, Miles and I have talked about this for years. Mike Hawk's on board. We know that. But uh, I don't know. So much talks to Ted. The the guy sitting next to you right there. Yeah. Yeah. I know. That is kind of funny. <laughs> Only if the show creator's up to it. He's right there, dude. <laughs> like, okay. Why don't you just turn your head and look at him? Like, what do you think? Mm-hmm. Ask him. Uh, let's see. Uh, speaking of reunions, there's a Martin reunion special coming up on BET Plus on My June 16th. I know. Oh. Which, it, it was, it, that was a great show. Martin was. I yeah, mean, I watched I mean, it a ton. I mean, that, that's where a lot of the character, like, he, remember, I think he did characters like Across the Hall and this and that. There is, I'm not going to say it, I think one of the friends may have passed away, one of the actors. Oh, from uh, Martin? Yeah. Uh... But yet, on June 16th, and then a teaser, uh, the cast are asked if they're up for a reboot. They just leave you hanging. So you could, basically, they want you to watch the special to see if there is going to be if one. If there's interest, then yes. I mean, look, we've talked about they're it. They're fishing. They're fishing, right. And with all the success a lot of these shows have had, yeah. so many networks, it's like, how, how could you not? You're going to offer me a paycheck to do characters I'm already familiar with? Sure. Yeah, why not, right? I mean, like, yeah. That'll be awesome. So yeah, if you're a fan of Martin, uh, yeah. Might be a reunion coming up. Thank you, Ted. We appreciate it. You're listening to the men's room. New on Curiosity Stream. With my infrared drone, I can see what others can't. Drone pilot Doug Thrawn uses his bird's eye view for the ultimate good, saving animals from desperate situations around the globe. Join the rescue effort on a new season of Doug to the Rescue. And you captured a Confederate steamboat. We're taking the ship to freedom. An enslaved crew, a stolen vessel, and a Civil War dash to salvation on impossible escapes. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are twenty dollars, just a dollar sixty-seven a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go. It's good news for drunks. Uh, Apple will now let you delete that after midnight text. <laughs> oh. For California man with a trunk full of stolen avocados, it appears that jail could be next. Florida man busted stealing a jet ski. Bonus points for not being able to swim. 15-year-old throws banana peel on side of a road, and a man tries to run over him. And a man spends 17 days in jail and blames American Airlines. It is time for your headlines. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my cock. All right, top seven going to New Mexico, where a man was sent to jail for shoplifting. He was fingered by American Airlines as the shoplifter. Oh my God. <laughs> as the shoplifter that stole items from one of the shops inside of Dallas Fort Worth Airport and was intercepted and taken to jail. After spending 17 days behind bars without even being told why he was uh, what he was being locked up for, it was discovered that what do you know? He actually wasn't the one that did the shoplifting. Hmm. He's now uh, lawyered up and is taking 17 several people to court. days in jail for shoplifting, and no one even told yeah. you why, why you're there. Right? This is some weird stuff. Yes. That is some weird stuff going on. Like, this to me is like, 
you are going to make millions off this stuff. Yes, he is. You're going to take everybody to the cleaners. Yes, he everybody. is. Everybody. Because he's got big you names got going so to many opportunities to sue so many dumbasses. <laughs> right. This Absolutely. Is, I mean, this is a lawyer's wet, well, dream. <laughs> <laughs> Which you got to wonder who thought they had such a slam dunk to where they could intercept this guy, not tell him why he was being arrested and lock him up for 17 days. Mm-hmm. You got to know that the last 15 days were, oh, God, please prove that it's him. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. Surveillance uh, no. is different. Guys, <laughs> this bad. In other news, down in Florida, it's like a scene out of a bad cop drama. Police were called after a man at the local waterfront made off with a jet ski. It should be noted that while he did jump on the device and get out of reach of its owners, he was never actually able to get the machine started and thereby was just floating away with it. Police jumped in to recover the jet ski and take uh, take the man into custody by using a boat that they had borrowed from another pair of patrons. They got it. Uh, they got to the man and told him to swim to them. To which he replied that he couldn't swim. He was eventually apprehended uh, with that incident, and the jet ski was returned. I mean, I'd say the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> swim to us. Nah, I, yeah, I can't. Swim. I can't. Yeah. I just like that he's out there floating. Now he's stranded. <laughs> I know. Because if he truly can't swim, now he's hosed. <laughs> you really didn't think this through. No. And what? You know, jet skis are known for just keeping their riders on the top. Nobody oh, gets yeah. bucked off of a jet ski. <laughs> no. no. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all, man. Nobody sinks. God. To California, where officers caught a man in the process of grand theft. Late in the night, an officer spotted a car stopped on the side of the road with its driver walking up behind... Uh, walking up from the field next to it with a full bucket of something. He stopped and searched the car and did find methamphetamine and paraphernalia along with a massive haul of avocados that he had just harvested from the field. While talking with the owner of the field, he was told that the man did not have permission to uh, grab those fruits and he was taken to jail. I mean... I don't blame him. As far no. as the market goes, avocados is not a bad thing to jump into the black market for. Yeah, like avocados and bacon. It's like right. your food currency. <laughs> You're always going to get rid of it, man. You can always peddle that out there. Also, phenomenal com- uh, combination. You're, not, you're right. Avocado was yeah. a bacon. Yeah. Like any any sandwich, it's like we can add bacon and avocado. Like, do Just it. Do it. Do it. Right. Especially a BLT. Well, it's already got the a bacon. A BLTA? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm yelling about it because I'm excited. Hi. Hey. <laughs> like to start my morning with some avocado yep. toast and bacon strips. <laughs> what if I just, you know what? You could order avocado toast. Three strips of bacon, Slap sandwich that made. Bad boy, right yeah, on that's top. Right. That's right. Boom. Working smarter here, Mike. Hey yo, get it done. A man in Georgia is in jail thanks to a banana peel. He was out on his property when he witnessed a 15-year-old riding a bike do the unthinkable. He threw a banana peel near his property. All right. This could not go unpunished, so the man pursued the teenager on his ATV, first scolding the teen, but the chase continued with when the teen, uh, sorry, when the kid tried to ride away from the man. The man eventually ran his ATV into the bike, causing it Jesus. to wreck. Police were called in, the man was arrested. Like, I get it, maybe he, you don't like it, you want to chastise the kid, alright, fine. Don't run the kid over with your ATV. Maybe. No. And that is it for your headlines with that, Mike Hawkins. Out. Thank you, sir. More men's room on the way with the men's room happy hour. We'll see you next exclusively on the Odyssey app. Yes, indeed. It's all true. In the meantime, well, we be all about this bitch for 180 seconds or so. So until then, please do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful. The men's room has been taped before a live studio audience. Wardrobe and makeup provided by Fantastic Limited. This has been a presentation of the men's room radio network. Double Flush Production. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Realtors abide by a code of ethics. This is Article 9 in action. Beth, a first-time homebuyer, knew nothing about the home buying process, except that she wanted to buy a home. But her Realtor had the expertise to make sure Beth understood every document, even giving her copies to review with her lawyer so Beth could close on her first home with confidence. Complicated things explained in simple terms. The difference between an agent and a Realtor is real. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. That's who we are. 
20 million dollars 19 million dollars six million dollars these are all awards recovered for clients of phillips law firm to win big you have to fight big and phillips law has been fighting the too big to fail insurance industry for decades not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome but phillips law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve if you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com